pirate radio transmitter equipment is different from standard broadcast transmitter equipment. We will be looking at the kind of equipment radio pirates use. These can vary dramatically in their type and the way that they are used. But that said, the main parts of a pirate radio station are the transmitter components that can range from very low power like 1 watt or less, to quite high power of about 10 watts to 100 watts. Before we begin, please be aware that pirate radio is illegal in many countries. Please also be aware of the laws in your country and abide by those laws. I in no way condone or promote radio pirating. This video is purely for entertainment and information purposes. Do not try any of the techniques or processes described in this video. You and you alone are responsible for your actions. I will not be held responsible for your actions. All you choose to do is at your own risk. Please read the disclaimer in the description. It's very rare to see Pirate FM transmitters in the power range of commercial radio stations which are in the thousands of watts. The reason for this is that the main objective of Pirate radio broadcasters is to not get caught. A high-powered transmitter is easier to track and find and it is very difficult to move around. A low-power transmitter can be easier to move, to set up and to dispose of if need be. The transmitter setup is made up of a low-power transmitter, an amplifier and an antenna. In some cases, the amplifier is built into the transmitter and is not a separate component. The antenna can be as complex as a folding collapsible antenna to as simple as a piece of wire cut to the right length. When a transmitter puts out less than about 5 watts, the antenna can really be a thin piece of wire. As the power goes up towards 100 watts, the antenna needs to be a lot more solid and well built. That is because the high power FM can burn the antenna, the cables and even the person operating the transmitter. In fact, any FM signal power above 1 watt can do some serious physical damage to a person. These include severe burns and even more severe injuries. Sometimes the low power transmitter can be legal in a country while the amplifier is not. So what some pirate broadcasters might do is run a cable to an amplifier which is hidden somewhere else on its way to the antenna. If need be, the amplifier can be turned off, leaving the low power signal to go to the antenna. It is more common though to find transmitters in the range of 5 to 30 watts as a single unit with the amplifier built in because many radio pirates choose to move around rather than stay in one place to broadcast. A moving signal, or one which gets moved every so often, is more difficult to track than one that is stationary. So often radio pirates will opt for a setup which is small, powerful and portable. Almost all of these transmitters operate from a 12 volt power supply to add to the portability because either a 12 volt portable battery can be used or a car battery can be connected to it. Now, as far as the audio part of the pirate radio station goes, there are the same needs to play music and to talk. In a professional radio studio, this can be a collection of equipment which is too difficult to carry around and too expensive to dispose of. This is why many transmitters intended for pirate radio broadcasting have a microphone input as well as an audio input for music. The mic input normally can only take a dynamic microphone and not a condenser mic or a USB microphone. There are also transmitter models that are complete with USB inputs, but they will probably be a bit more expensive and often can only play pre-recorded audio from an SD card of some kind. Pirate radio operators who intend on abandoning the transmitter and never coming back to get it might opt for this because the entire broadcast can be put on a flash drive or SD card and left to repeat until the battery goes flat. In many cases, a cell phone would be used for the music and pre-recorded audio. There are even pirate radio transmitters that have built-in audio limiters to keep the audio nice and clean. This is something that often gets pirate radio broadcasters exposed. That is, the audio is not limited, so can easily over-deviate, which will be detected very quickly. This is because even for a licensed broadcaster, over-deviating is illegal. So without a limiter, you are likely to over-deviate unless you play your audio very low to avoid over-deviating. But this then also becomes obvious because licensed radio stations don't tend to under-deviate either. There are some quite good quality transmitters that have built-in limiters and have mic and audio inputs with a control for their volume too, which is all in one package. This makes for an easy to use, complete broadcast package. It is for this reason that these models are not for sale in the USA as a one watt transmitter as it would be a near-perfect setup for pirate broadcasters. This package is, however, available in the 100 milliwatt range or lower. As I said before, this would simply need an amplifier to take it up to one watt or beyond. The amplifier can even be built into the same unit to make it easier to carry around. That said, as I explained before, do not try any of this. It is illegal in most countries, and what you do is at your own risk. 
When you search for FM transmitters on sites like eBay, you will mostly find these kinds of car FM transmitters that have very low power and often very low quality audio. These are not what gets used for pirate radio. It is, however, possible if a person has the know-how that they could increase the output power of these kinds of devices. But that would probably be more of a headache than it's worth. There are also some more advanced techniques that involve fluctuating the output power to make it very difficult to track as well as some very clever techniques for hiding and disposing of the equipment. There are also things like disguising the radio pirate's voice as well as their identities to consider. I will talk more about that in the future, so be sure to subscribe to not miss out on that one. Another very important point to consider is that when all else fails, the equipment would need to be gotten rid of quickly. That means it would need to be inexpensive equipment because the pirate broadcasters might never see it again. So not only would the equipment need to be easy to set up, unplug and pack up, but it would need to be something that they don't mind throwing away. Most of the FM transmitters used by radio pirates are made, with often questionable specifications. Not all made transmitters are poor quality, but many of the cheaper ones are very problematic. The ones often used, though, are used because they are cheap, but they can be very dangerous to use because they may cause interference with other devices like TVs, radios, and two-way communication radios used for police, aircraft, and emergency services. Even local Wi-Fi networks can be affected, and in severe cases, even cell phones. The interference will draw unwanted attention and make the transmitters more trackable. The problems caused and the laws that are broken can extend even beyond unlicensed broadcasting to affecting emergency services, breaking commercial communication signal laws, and even causing other unexpected situations where electronic devices are affected that are needed for a range of purposes. The complete kit for pirate broadcasters who don't intend to dispose of the equipment unless absolutely necessary consists of the transmitter, the RF amplifier, the antenna, the audio mixer that you might find in mobile discos or clubs, the microphone, which can stand on its own without a boom stand, a device with music on it, the 12-volt battery, headphones, a small Bluetooth speaker with an FM receiver, a two-way radio to communicate with spotters, and all the cables needed. These will be small and portable, but not as small as a system that might be thrown away or left to run until the battery is flat. Let's now discuss what pirate radio actually is. Pirate radio broadcasting is any form of radio broadcasting that is unlicensed. It mostly applies to forms of broadcasting that are illegal, but there are some forms of unlicensed radio transmitting which is allowed. For example, some low-power transmitters in the USA in certain cases are allowed. In New Zealand, for example, you can broadcast between 87.6 MHz and 88.3 MHz with a 1 watt broadcast radio signal without a license, as well as 106.7 MHz to 107.7 MHz. The laws vary from country to country, so make sure you know and understand those laws where you are before attempting anything. To watch more on pirate radio, click here when the video is ready. And to learn more about radio broadcasting, click here.